Where do I look? Just you? Yeah. No. It's okay. No, same, same, same. Okay. Um, so, assalamu alaikum. My name is Sajida. Um, so, my name is Sajida Kutti. Uh, Alavi Kutti um, is my grandfather's name. So, Alavi is Ali. So, for my pen name, I, choose, I chose SK Ali to honor my grandfather. Um, my grandfather is from, is, he passed away. But he lived in Valanchiri, in uh, Ediyur. Yeah. Um, and um, I visited growing up. And like every two, three years, we would go visit so, uh, Kerala. Uh, Ahmad Kutti's father. Yes. And um, every few years, we would go visit Kerala. But I don't know the language very well because um, my father spoke English to us. My um, mother spoke in Malayalam, you but you speak Malayalam. Not speak Malayalam. No, I, do, I, I, I do. I only speak a little bit. Um, I understand if people speak slowly, and they use simpler words. I can understand it. I can't watch a movie. I don't understand any of that. But um, but one of the things <coughs> that I said in the event was that. Um, uh, when I started to write more authentically, I was like 20 years old, and one of the ways that I wrote more authentically and that I distinguished myself from my classmates um, in my university classes was that I would translate some of the words my mom you would say when she was speaking with um, Taiba's Taiba's mother. At the, but, uh, Taiba. Yeah, yeah okay. Taiba's mother, she, I, I would be doing my homework and my mom would be on the phone speaking in Malayalam and she'd be, they'd be talking, talking, talking every day and sometimes I'd hear little words that they, there's no, no equivalence in the English language. Um, that she describes something in Malayalam that is not doesn't have an English word for. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I start to use that in my writing and uh, my poems and my short stories. And when I used to bring that to class, all the other people in the class would be like, wow, because it was, you know, it was something new to them. But it was, I wrote it in English, but it was a way to describe something that Malayali Wait. So what I'm asking, you know, you the Sharjah Book Fair classified you as a migrant writer or something like that. Yeah. So how you become a migrant writer? Because your forefather migrated to the Canada. Yeah. Or the father. Ahmed yeah. Kuti. We Canadians know about Toronto Ibrahim yeah. and the Toronto uh, uh, Ahmed Kuti. Yeah. Uh, so how you place your as a migrant writer? Because you don't have. You yeah. are Born and brought up in Canada actually. Yeah. No, I was I was born in India, but I was three years old when uh -huh. I when I when I came to uh, Canada. So I actually told them that, that I don't write migrant stories and I don't write immigrant stories. I write um, stories of third generation, like my kids, you know. Um, so that is a space that I write from, which is a mixed space, you know, yeah. Well, what is the inspiration from your father, Ahmed mm -hmm. What like inspiration? To, uh, for the writing. Oh, he always supported me. He always supported. He supported. I'm asking about the inspiration from. Inspiration. To, to write. Well, the inspiration came from him bringing us up unapologetically Muslim, and our identity. Um, he always, you know, um, instilled confidence in us. So the inspiration to be my confident self in writing came from him, and our home was filled with books and because he loves to read and so we always had books around us and my father never ever said you have to become this you have to become that you mm -hmm. have to become a doctor you have to become mm -hmm. engineer you have to become this he 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 loved that i loved writing and the arts and everything so he always encouraged that yeah professionally what do you professionally before my profession was a teacher mm -hmm. um but i studied in university i studied Writing. What subject? I, it's, I taught uh, second grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I, now I'm not a teacher anymore. I am a full time and author. And I have a question being a mm -hmm. Muslim writer mm -hmm. yeah, uh, in Canada, mm -hmm. North America, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, you people, we, uh, the world is Islamophobia or something like that. Yeah. What kind of challenges you are facing as yeah. an, uh, being a Muslim writer in North America? Um, the, mostly the challenge has been for not just Muslim writers, but anybody who's not um, in power and privileged is that opening the doors for publishing. So one of the things that um, there was some research done into um, books representing non-white people. And if you put all the books for young people together, uh, there were less books featuring non-white characters than there were featuring robots and animals mm -hmm. and you know so when that research was done there was a lot of people saying you know we want our stories too so that's the biggest challenge is the publishing industry opening the doors mm -hmm. to be interested in our stories because a lot of publishing is run by the people in privilege and power so they don't want to sometimes hear the other people's stories but then what happened is all the different communities of marginalized people mm -hmm. and people of color of different backgrounds, we all united mm -hmm. and connected. And there was a big movement in 2014 mm -hmm. and everyone united on social media and said, we want 